right, so you all just got a chance to experience about three lessons in uh, learning set two of this particular unit. How is this place on earth going to change over 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, or a million years? And we talked about at the beginning that uh, these units are project-based learning, and there's specific features of project-based learning that we try to highlight within the lesson plans and within the units. And so I want you to think about some of the features of project-based learning that you think you may have experienced as we went through this. So for instance, what about the idea of pursuing solutions to a meaningful question? Did you feel like, when did you think about where you experienced this idea of asking questions and students asking questions and how that was supported in the unit? What do you think? At the beginning when we started off with the driving question and everyone wrote down what they were thinking about. Also, when we were doing the investigation, my group came up with another question that we were then followed up through um, and actually um, implemented it to see what would happen. Any other ideas about when we were using that, how we were using that driving question? So, Danita talked about the fact that we used it at the beginning and that she was also coming up with some of her own questions during the investigation. Did, were there any other times when we used that driving question? When we were looking at the slides to try and decide um, uh, which, which picture, whether it was the billiard balls or it was the scraping of the ice, we went back to that driving question to see, to see how could that help us answer the driving question. All right, so we really are, we call it that driving question because it's driving the instruction. So we really want to make sure the kids are always, you saw Kelly would go back and point to the driving question board as she was uh, presenting. We want to continue to help kids to see that the reason they're doing all these different activities is this idea of trying to answer this one big question and how, even though this seemed like totally different from our big question, but it's still about Belle Isle and we're trying to answer that question about how is Belle Isle going to be over a long period of time. And I think that brings out the component there, uh, one of the features of PBL is the idea that it's a meaningful question. Mm -hmm. So I think that because kids can make connections to something that's meaningful in the community and tie it to their backyard or what they see downtown or at Belle Isle, it becomes authentic, so I think that those questions continually come up throughout the unit. Kids are constantly noticing and wondering okay. different things. Great. What about collaboration? Did you, uh, when were, did you feel like there was collaboration within what you experienced today? Definitely as we were generating our predictions, um, also carrying out the investigation. Um, there was a lot of collaborating um, when we were even having our discussion, ideas were making connections between things that we said way at the beginning of our session and bouncing ideas off of each other as we're having the discussion. You want to add to that? Ideas about collaboration and when it was what really supported your figuring out? I think even during our investigation, mm -hmm. we were constantly problem solving and collaborating together, right. coming up with new questions, with questions and figuring out new solutions and trying them out. Mm -hmm. And then going back to the drawing board, even as we were um, adding and revising our models, I think that there was some collaboration as well. And I think it was really helpful that we had moments where it was just a couple of us, like maybe two of us, that were working together and collaborating in that small intimate space. But then also, as a large group, um, that also added value <coughs> ideas in across collaboration. Them. And then the last one I really want to talk about is this idea of scaffolding learning to help students participate in activities normally beyond their ability. So that idea of supporting students in using ideas. What were some ways that we, as we were going through these lessons, that we were supporting the students in being able to use ideas? I think the imagery we used for the analogy portion um, many students might not have a solid understanding of what an analogy is, so having, so constantly going back to those images to describe and help them connect one of those analogies to their thinking or to their experience was definitely helpful and also tying it into the sentence starter on the next slide so that they could fill in, I feel, I think that this investigation was like this and this because. So having those components help them with the analogy piece was a, uh, a strong scaffold. Is there anyone who agrees with uh, what Kiera said about the, the analogy? Is that something that your kids would normally know about or use in the classroom? Yeah, to go, to go off to what Kiera said, it's like 
uh, kids might not be able to uh, describe what's going on with the sand, but then when they use that picture, they can say, well, it reminds me of a slide, and then say, because of, you know, I saw the, the sand sliding down. Mm -hmm. They might not have been able to come up with that vocabulary if they hadn't um, seen that picture. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the fact that she said vocabulary. Did you want to add something about that, Christy? So I was thinking about that as Amy was talking because Kelly was accepting all the words we, we gave to her, like wearing away, cutting down, bouncing off, and she wasn't explicitly saying this is what this is called until the end of the lesson when we had a good idea of what was actually happening. So that kind of leads back to you don't have to front load the information because the kids just need to learn the concept. Mm -hmm. And then once they understand the concept, then we can actually have an opportunity to say, oh, this is what scientists call it. Right. And that's what we mean by scaffolding, is this idea of supporting kids. When you think about scaffolding on a building that helps the building stand up. So we're giving them these supports so that by the time Kelly finished, having you use your own vocabulary or the students use their own vocabulary to describe what's happening now they have a great big understanding of what that means and then as as Christy said we're adding that word this that science word to those ideas and so that's that idea of scaffolding so the other thing that we talked about that we want you to really notice as we went through these lessons are how we use the talk moves did you notice Kelly or um, uh, Amber, who's actually wonderful at it, or me, not so much. But anyway, did you notice us using those talk moves to really support you in figuring out and to support the, the actual discussion during the lessons? What talk moves did you notice? I remember Amber, when we were standing at the table actually building our model, she said, uh, well, somebody explained what they were doing, and she said, did I hear you say? And she kind of restated it in different words to make sure that she understood and that Capture. She was capturing the learning. And so which one of the talk moves do you think that seemed like to you? Helping a student clarify his thinking. Any other talk moves that you noticed during these lessons? Danita? Um, helping students deepen their, uh, deepening their understanding or their reasoning. I saw that when, um, if I would say something or someone else would, can you tell me more about that? Uh, what else can you say, give me more information? That happened a lot. Yes. And I think, too, even just us being in a circle here where we were able to show our models to each other was helping us to make our ideas public. And so we had uh, plenty of time to sit and think about our ideas. We had plenty of time to individually talk. And then we were brought to a space where we felt comfortable and we already knew and wrote out and drew our thinking and then felt confident and comfortable to share our ideas with the group. Excellent. Excellent. Also, making ideas public. Um, that we're focusing on one of the um, questions that we added to the driving question board um, and tying it back into the driving question. I think doing, um, making sure to highlight those questions shows students how their smaller questions helps lead us to um, the end result. And so not only putting the questions up on the board, but taking those questions and highlighting them and showing those students how our input is getting us to